He's such a little liar. He was begging to get into the studio. He was so excited. And 10 seconds later, he looks like I've been keeping him prisoner. He looked like... Hey, Nick of Nine Card TCG. And today, we're going to be looking at William Azevedo's Cura Pizza Regional Winning Decklist. This is a Charizard Pidgeot Decklist. First, I apologize if I mispronounced anything in that previous sentence. Three of the top four decks at this regional of 379 players were... Charizard Pidgeot and then what was it top eight there was five 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 Charizard Pidgeot in top eight absolutely insane Arceus Duraludon uh Gardevoir and then Lost Tina were the other three decks that made up this top eight again congratulations to William for taking down the tournament uh, it's really cool to see Charizard doing well I don't really know why Charizard is popping up so much and doing so well I don't know if it's just we cracked the list. I say we like I had anything to do with that. I don't know if other people have kind of figured out the list. Like this is the best way to play Charizard. I don't know if the meta has shifted in such a way that <laughs> um, the, the Charizard is now in a prime position to do well. Not really sure, but we're going to take a look at this deck list anyway. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff tells YouTube this is a good channel and other people should watch it. If we get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which is my personal goal, I will release this dog from the studio. If we don't get that goal, he stays here forever. Now, uh, we're going to have a really cool giveaway if we hit that goal. So, if you know, do me a favor, uh, hit, the, hit the button and we'll just get right to the video. Before we talk about the deck list at all, I made two changes to the list so you can play this a little bit better and a little easier. This has the uh, Charmander and Pidgey from the Pokemon 151 set. The Pidgey and Charmander that William used were the Obsidian Flame versions. These are the 151 versions. They're better and should make the deck a little bit better. So anyway, we do have four Charmanders. We have a Charmeleon and we have three Charizard EX. Again, if you're wondering why the new Charizard EX isn't in this deck list, it's because it wasn't legal for the regional when William played. So we have Charizard EX, the dark type, 330 health with the Terra attribute, so it can't be damaged when on the bench. Really, really cool. Infernal Rain is an incredible ability. When we play this card from our hand to evolve one of our Pokemon, search your deck for three fire energies and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you want. That means you can power up this Pokemon and another Charizard or half of another Charizard because Burning Darkness only needs two fire energy. So we can get two energies on this thing, power it up fully, get another energy on another Charizard, attach for turn, and then we got two Charizard powered up out of nowhere. It's really, really good. The attack Burning Darkness does 180 damage plus 30 more damage for each prize card our opponent has taken. So we can do a ton of damage in the late game, but we sacrifice some very early game uh, damage. So we're not going to be taking one shots on Pokemon V or basic Pokemon EXs most of the time, but we're going to be able to take those really big one shots on those guard of our EXs, Mew V Maxes, uh, Lugia V Stars, whatever, really easily later in the game. We of course have Pidgey. This is the 151 Pidgey. It has Call for Family, which is an incredible attack. It lets us search our deck for two basic Pokemon and put them onto our bench. That means if we start a Pidgey, we're not as dead in the water as we would have been. We have a chance to kind of get the game going or come back from that because we just attach an energy, get two Charmanders into play, and then we're kind of cooking from there. We can get another Charmander and another Pidgey, and then we can evolve them both the following turn, and we're kind of okay. So uh, I really like this Pidgey a lot, and I think it adds quite a bit to this deck of course the pidgey evolves into the pidgeot ex quick search once they your turn search your deck for any card you want put it into your hand but you can't use more than one quick search each turn so even if you have two pidgeot exes in play you could only use a single quick search otherwise this would be stupid broken we do have blustery wind by the way it does 120 damage discard a stadium for two colorless energies this can this really can be useful if there's a path to the peak in play it just, it's stuck. We can't find one of our lost vacuums or a way to get rid of it. So we say, all right, we'll, we'll bust the rewind to discard that stadium and then have access to path. Some of the other Pokemon include Radiant Charizard. This is how we're going to be able to attack for really big damage without having to sacrifice a two prize Pokemon EX. So Excited Heart, this attack cost is one call less for each prize card our opponent has taken. Again, this is a deck that as our opponent takes more and more prizes, we get better and better. Combustion Blast for a Fire Energy and four Colas does 250 damage, but we can't use Combustion Blast next turn. 
really not that big of a deal. This is actually something we can use very early on with the uh, Infernal Rain ability. So we get three energies onto this thing from Infernal Rain, and then we attach for turn, and that's four energies. And so if our opponent's taking a single prize, we can very easily come right out the gate swinging super hard with Radiant Charizard for a big 250. Really, really cool. We also have Entei V with the Fleet Footed ability. Once during your turn, when this card's in the active, you can draw a card. Really nice extra consistency boost. And then Burning Rondo does uh, 20 damage plus 20 more damage for each Pokemon you and your opponent have on the bench. So you can do a max of 220 damage if both you and your opponent have full benches. And this is just for two fire energy. So again, we attach for turn and then we put an energy onto this from you know Infernal Darkness or in whatever, whatever the... Uh, Infernal Rain ability, Infernal Rain. Uh, and now we're able to swing for a good amount of damage. We can punish our opponent for kind of going wide with their bench, putting a lot of Pokemon on. And this is how we can get early quick KOs on Pokemon V, Pokemon uh, base of Pokemon EX, things like that. So there you go. Burning Rondo, plus a little bit of draw consistency. Not bad. Luminion we, lets us search for a, a supporter. We put it from our hand to the bench, get a supporter, put it into our hand. We have the Mysterious Tail Mew, and it, once during your turn, when this Pokemon's in the active spot, so look at the top six cards of your deck, and find any item there, put it into your hand. This is really good for finding things like Lost Vacuum, so we can get rid of Path to the Peak, Rare Candy, Early Game Battle VIP Pass, whatever item we need, we can probably find, because we play a lot of these in uh, pretty high quantities. Notice you cannot get Choice Belt or Forest Seal Stone with Mew. I know Forest Seal Stone says item on it, but there's been a change to the rules and tool cards are no longer items. So if you look at newer tools, it does not say item anymore. So you cannot get Forest Seal Stone with Mew. You can get Forest Seal Stone with the four Arvin that we had. If you told me that there was going to be a deck that played four Arvins, I would have... I wouldn't have believed you. This is really cool because you can get a tool and an item. So the tool is the, usually the Forest Seal Stone and you can get something like a rare candy. So even if we have neither of those in our hand, what we can do is we can rare candy, uh, use like the Forest Seal Stone to find like the Pidgeot or the Charizard EX, and then also get the rare candy with the Arvin, play the rare candy, evolve into the Pokemon, and then there we go. This is really cool because if we already have a rare candy in our hand, we play Arvin, we get a, a rare candy and a Forest Seal Stone, Forest Seal Stone gets us a Pidgeot EX, evolve with the with the when, uh, one rare candy into the Pidgeot, and then use Quick Search to then go ahead and get a Charizard EX, and use the second rare candy to evolve into the Charizard. Charizard's ability lets us get energies into play, and now we have a Pidgeot and a Charizard and energies, all because of we had a single uh, a single Arvin in our hand. Can you? Okay, you need to get down. We also have Mawile with the Tempting Trap during your opponent's next turn to defend the Pokemon can't retreat and they take 90 more damage from attacks. This is really cool because like we said, this Charizard EX, it does base 180. So we're not always able to take the knockouts that we want with it. So if we can trap our opponent's active in uh, opponent's Pokemon in the active and then do more damage to it, now this 180 suddenly becomes a lot more and we're able to take the KOs. This also, of course, works with the Radiant Charizard or something like the Entei. So we're able to really increase the amount of damage that we're able to do. The one issue with this is that a lot of decks, depending on what you're playing, will run escape ropes, switches, switch cards, things like that. So something to keep in mind, um, might be a little hard to keep something in the active. Even Lugia now runs jet energies, uh, at least oftentimes. Lost Tina, of course. Um, so something like you need like a Gardevoir, even, and I don't even know if they run switches anymore, but whatever. And then we still have Manaphy. We have to protect our Pidgeys. We have to protect our Charmanders. Uh, Champau can get absolutely nutty and Radiant Greninja very, very early. So we got to protect our Pokemon. Our Pokemon search is two Nest Balls, four Ultra Balls, and four Battle VIP Pass. We got the four Rare Candies. We got to get rid of something like a Path to the Peak. We can go ahead and Lost Vacuum it away. Get our own Pokemon out of the active with Escape Rope. Super Rod to recover Pokemon or Energies or both. Choice Belt lets us do 30 more damage to Pokemon V. This is great because then Radiant Charizard over here does 250. Now all of a sudden we're one-shotting Lugia and Giratina V-Stars. And uh, we're using a single prize to do it, which is really cool. Forest Seal Stone 
It's a V-Star power. You can only use it once per game, but you set your deck for any card you want. Put it into your hand. Very, very good. We have a single Professor's Research. Discard your hand. Draw seven cards. Iono for a little bit of disruption or early game consistency. Both players shuffle their hands and put them to the bottom of their deck. And then each player draws cards based on the number of prize cards they have remaining. We have a single Penny. Why do we want to use Penny? Put one of your basic Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your hand. Two, uh, a, a few reasons. We have a Mew. Mew's in the active and we don't have an escape rope. Well, we can Penny it up and now we can promote something else. We have a Luminiana on the bench that we really don't want our opponent to boss KO and win the game or just get two easy prizes. Penny. We have an Entei V that, or a Radiant Charizard that's taken damage um, or we have an Entei that's taken damage. It's going to be easy for our opponent to get prizes. Penny. We have a Radiant Charizard that we attacked with last turn. And now, Combustion Blast, we can't use again. So we go ahead, Penny, bring it into the hand. And then we play it again. And now all of a sudden, we can use Combustion Blast again. Second turn in a row. Um, you know, if we need to pull up a Charmander or a Pidgey that we have in play... Um, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is, we, there's there's a few situations where Penny would become pretty usable. We got three copies of the boss's orders. Bring one of your opponent's bench Pokemon into the active. We talked about Arvin. Two copies of Lost City. Whenever a Pokemon is knocked out, it goes from, instead of going to the discard, it goes to the Lost Zone, never to be seen again. This is really cool for getting rid of our opponent's Sableyes, our opponent's Radiant Greninjas, things that really can cause us some problems. And then we have eight basic fire energies we don't need a ton all of our pokemon with the exception of radiant uh charizard over here can attack for two uh energies and even charizard the radiant charizard can attack for two maybe even one fire energy depending on how many prizes your opponent has so we don't need a ton of energies in this deck and then we do have the super odd to be able to get some back so we can accelerate them out of the deck with radiant char uh the charizard ex too many charizards for me to keep track of what's going on but that's basically the deck it's very very cool i will likely be updating my charizard ex deck to look similar to this i don't know how much this mawile was used i really wish i could talk to william and find out like how good was the mawile and, and what matchups did it really matter but that's probably the one thing I would really reconsider. But otherwise, I am a big fan of this deck. I think it's it's pretty lean. It's, pr it's pretty uh, straightforward on what it wants to do. I don't think you really need to make a ton of difficult decisions, at least without having played it. Just looking at it, it seems like there's a very straightforward list. Get your Pidgey and or your Pidgey out and your Charizard set up very, very quickly. You have Entei and, uh, you know, as like an uh, alternate early game attacker. And then uh, that's basically it. <laughs> and you, you know, Radiant Charizard can be like a mid to late game uh, sweeper type of thing. So it's a really cool deck and I'm excited to give it a go. But for now, uh, I, I can just give my initial thoughts, but I want to know from you, what do you think of this Charizard OS? It seems, again, the four Arvin seems to be a thing and I'm not really sure why, but it's, uh, man, Arvin, it's his time to shine. It's his format. We're just living it. But that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Found it informative. If you did, like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. I want to give a special shout out to the YouTube members Black Winds, Mike the Highest, Fernando Ortiz, Chin Pokemon, and Eric N. Thank you all so, so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. And if you want to become a channel member, you can go ahead and click the channel member button somewhere at the bottom of the page. I'm not really sure. I haven't done it myself.